And uh, my way to make it practical, so how you do with the elbow dislocation, uh, first time elbow dislocation. I'm a team physician too, I take care about a lot of judo and rugby players, so I have uh, some experience in this way. I don't talk about the orthopedic way, which is, you will see mandatory uh, later on. So you will see we are not agree with, uh, with Dr. Cassidy. First of all, I think of course, m most part, some, some of the, the dislocation are rotatory, some are not. That's a clinical fact and we're gonna talk about it. First of all, as a French guy, I would like to make the difference, or European guy, between instability and laxity. It's really a difference. Instability is a functional sign. It's when you have some giving way. It's not always due to uh, laxity, that means uh, a, a disruption of the of a ligament or a non large uh, a stretching of the ligament. You can have laxity without instability, for instance, in a, in a, a Marfan disease or something like that. You can have instability without laxity that, due to pain, to a lot of strength, to a loose body inside the joint. So it's not our topic today. And you can have instability, that means a, a functional sign with a giving way, with laxity. And in this fact, it's an acute dislocation. It's very important to make the difference between laxity and instability. They, are look, they look similar, but they are clearly different. The elbow stabilizer, we're gonna do it quickly because we, we talked extensively this morning and now. Of course, you have the bony congruency. And you know that probably the most important thing now in the, in the, in the early cranon is the coronary process. And the radial head is not so important when the MCL or the medial collateral ligament is intact. It's only, it is only in charge of 30% of the lateral stability. And if you look at the bony lesion combined with the dislocation, it's not so frequent. 5% of the radial head are fractured, 10% of the coronary process, 15% of the condyles, surprisingly, and of course, sometimes you can have an allocranon in, spe in some specific cases. The second, the second stabilizer are the ligament. You know well, and of course, you know since this morning that the anterior bundle of the urinary collateral ligament is the most important in valgus. And the lateral collateral ligament, which is torn in rotatory instability, especially in varus and supination, the supination that Dr. Cassidy showed you is really important, of course, you have a rotation, but uh, when you have a rotation in supination, the capsule disrupt from lateral to medial, but the posterior aspect, not by the anterior aspect, but the posterior aspect. So that's why you don't have always some uh, disruption in the anterior part. And the anterior capsule, of course, is in charge of 85% of, of stabilization in, ex in full extension. So you can consider when you are in full extension, you have stability due to the medial collateral ligament, to the anterior capsule, and some part of the, of the bone, especially the coronary process. So when you have a dislocation, mandatory, you have a soft tissue lesion. It depends on the mechanism, and of course, you have a posterior lateral rotatory instability. That's, sure, that's for sure. But you know by experience, and I think I'm not the only one, then you have some patient who complained from, an, who, who had a dislocation, who had only some swelling, some pain, and some instability in valgus type without any instability in rotation, in supination. And of course, in some cases, there is the anterior translation. And I will talk very quickly about the other stabilizer, which of course can participate to the stabilization, but it's not the case because we, get, we got a dislocation, so they are not enough to stabilize the knee, the, the elbow, sorry. The sport involved, they are not only pitcher, they are throwers, loading elbow, especially loading elbows, Shock elbow, when the elbow is the knee, you have to pay attention to that. That means when you are on this sport, it's really important to get normal elbows after reduction and after treatment to recover the full uh, uh, activity. And it depends, of course, of velocity, strength, impact, and so on. The prevalence of elbow dislocation is a second joint after the shoulder in concert with dislocation. It concerns 12% of elbow trauma and if you represent to the overall population, it's six for, one, for 100,000 people per year. So it's not so rare. And the risk of an acute dislocation, the first one is stiffness. One patient out of three 
will complain from stiffness, do the bleeding and triarticular and surround the joint. So that's why my algorithm will be focused on the, on the rehab post-reduction. And the remaining instability is also important. 7% of the patient complain of slight symptom or chronic or even recurrent instability. That's, we, have to, we, have, we also have to avoid that. So when you get a dislocation, you have, of course, to check the deformity. And when you are a team physician or by the side of the, of the field, the first thing is to make the difference between the dislocation and the humeral shaft fracture. You know the triangle of Neton or the alignment of the different uh, bony landmarks. And of course, with this alignment, when you keep intact all the alignment, the triangle inflection or the line in extension, that means you have a, a shaft fracture and you don't have a dislocation because this line or this triangle is modified when you have a dislocation and a big elbow like that. So when you do, when you see such a dislocation, of course, you have to check the nerves and the vessels, that's for sure, and you have to try to check the displacement. And on the practical point of view, with the, when you look for the tip of the olecranon, you can almost know where is located the, uh, where is the, the track of the dislocation. And in my hand, and, it's, and it could be controversial, but for sure, you have to m reduce it early on the field. There, you have to reduce it early on the field. Even if you have some neural damage, and especially if you have neural damage, I dislocate both my elbows in once. I can tell you, I, I was really satisfied to reduce it in a few minutes. Because when you are dislocated, it's not comfortable at all. So if you wait for the transfer to the orthopedic department, if you uh, if you wait for the radiologist, if you wait for the resident and so on, it takes hours and hours, or minutes and minutes, I should say, I could say sometimes. And in this way, what I can say that the surrounding tissue s suffer much more than if you reduce it immediately. And the, fo and the onset will be fully different. Is it risky to reduce such a dislocation, to try to reduce it? Of course, you have to, to learn to do it. There is no risk. Even if you have some fracture, even if the fracture is entrapped, later on, if you see a fragment which is, in, uh, which is uh, a, a fracture which is um, free, when you will reduce it, it, there is no way to avoid the entrapment if you know if it is present or not. So it's not risky. How to do it? There are some, some tricks to, to learn to, to reduce the, the elbow dislocation. And I can tell you that each judo professor, I don't talk about medic, I, do, I don't talk about med, uh, doctors or I don't talk about physio, they know how to do it. They reduce all the elbows on the, on the, on the tatami. So it's quite easy to do it by gentle manipulation on the olecranon. And of course, you immobilize the elbow temporarily. And that's the time to transfer the patient to the orthopedic department. So you're gonna make an x-ray, in this case, the dislocation is present or not, you have to check if there is a fracture of or not. That's a fact. I fully agree with Dr. Cassidy. And you have to be aware of bony entrapment. And in my opinion, that's the time to make a testing. And it will be probably the most important thing. The testing must be made in varus and supination, in valgus, in posterolateral instability. You have to test it in different ways to identify the lesion. You get the bone, you get the ligament, and probably the cartilage later on. You can make a classification, it's not a matter. But this clinical testing, gently made, don't, doesn't need any local injection for the pain. It doesn't need any anesthesiology. When you have pain, if you are gentle, and if you do it, and if you look at for apprehension, you don't have to try to dislocate it. It's like a shoulder testing. When you test the shoulder, you say, there is an apprehension test. That's the same for an elbow. If the patient say, oh, you're going to move away, you, you, you can stop. And in this way, you can know exactly if it's a posterior lateral rotatory instability, a valgus one, a varus one. And sometimes, if you are not so sure, you can make some stress radiographs to, ch to check if there is some enlargement of the joint line of the medial side of a posterior subluxation of the radialite. In my experience, in emergency, there is no place for CT scan. 
there is no place for CT scan. So you know now what the at risk lesion, bone, concerning the bone or the ligament. And here is the algorithm I propose to you. First, you can sometimes need obviously surgery, causing because you find some causing factor of instability, especially bony one. When you have a large radial fracture, if you can fix it, you fix it. Or if small fragment, you can remove it. And in my experience, it's much more better, especially in athletes and young people, than a primary uh, uh, replacement by a prosthesis. The small fragment has to be removed. This Procedures can be made arthroscopically. It can concern the coronary process, which is, in my opinion, the most important thing to fix if it's a large fragment. You can remove the fragment of the radial head, or you can fix it arthroscopically too. Here is an, a sample of a coronary, it's in French, of a coronary process fracture with a, a CT scan in this case, a big fragment. I here is the arthroscopic view with the coronary process, C, the trochlea, T, and the radial head, T, uh, T air. So you can put some needle just to find the axis. You can fix it uh, from posterior to anterior by a screw or by, or by uh, pins. And here is the result, which stabilize the uh, elbow. The second algorithm, if you don't have a, a, an obvious bone fragment to stabilize, you have, a, you have a elbow dislocated without fracture. When you test it, it's stable, no risk. You can immediately start the rehab without any immobilization. When you test it without fracture and the uh, elbow is unstable, in this case, I put a removable cast and I start immediately the rehab avoiding the range of motion which is at risk. That's purely um, logical. That means if there is a range, of, uh, a range of mobility where the elbow can dislocate, you have to avoid it. So, but you can start the flexion, you can start pronation, you can start a lot of things for three weeks. There is a, a time for healing for each tissue and after you can increase the, the mobility. And in my opinion, stable or unstable without fracture, there is no place for surgery. If there is a fracture combined with the dislocation, once reduced, if it's stable, if you have a small fragment, you can remove it if it's untrapped or if it, can, if it could untrap. If you have an elbow dislocation with an unstable elbow, you have to repair not the bone, but the soft tissue. And the soft tissue, in my opinion, the most important thing is the medial collateral ligament. And at that time, you can start immediately the rehab without, with a protect range of motion. The post of management, you have to, the, the massage are fully prohibited on the place of the hematoma. You have to perform relaxing massage far from the, far from the place. You can use anti-inflammatory devices by the physio, whatever you want balneotherapy, cryotherapy, physiotherapy, what you want. The recover of range of motion without risk, in flexion extension, in pronation for full extension, and you have to get in mind the goal is to have a full range of motion within the, the weeks number six. You have to work also on the wrist and, and the grip because we talk about sportsmen. The progressive rehab after six weeks can take up to six months when it's a large defect, when it's a triad or something like that. It's what we can call, like in the knee, the reathletization. There is different techniques, but you have to protect all the soft tissue and hold the healing for three months. And of course, the resume to sport depends largely on the sport perform. It's not always the same if you're cycling, if you are in a scrum in a rugby, or if you're a hip hop dancer. So at the conclusion, I should say that dislocation is an emergency, of course. You have to try to reduce it immediately, there is not a simple and unique onset, but once reduced, you need a specialized opinion to know if you need to operate it or not. The recurrent dislocation is a special case. There is only one side about that. It's when you reduce it, and unfortunately, all the soft tissue didn't heal correct properly. It's quite rare. And when you have to repair this, um, stabilize this kind of uh, recurrent dislocation, you stabilize both sides often, lateral and medial, and you have to rebuild the coronary process 
when it has been uh, destroyed. And it's the only place for me to propose a radial edge replacement when it has been previously excised. Here is the final algorithm. When you have an acute dislocation, you reduce it, you test it. It's stable. Without fracture, you, re you start rehab immediately. With a fracture, you remove the fragment. If the elbow is unstable, with a fracture, you fix it, of course. Without fracture, you put a cast and you start the rehab. And you, and you will avoid the chronic onset, which is in green on this slide. And I invite you to the next World Sport Trauma Meeting in London after the Olympics next year. Next year. Thank you.